Welcome sentient beings from all known universes and beyond. It's time to activate your cranial downlinks and prepare to receive a raft of discussion on a cosmic ocean of science fiction and fantasy topics, interviews with local area genre devotees, and insightful prognostication by our soothsayers of science fiction, our forecasters of fantasy, and any other beings that happen to get caught in our gravity well. This is the Galactic Driftwood Podcast. Oh, and welcome to another episode of Galactic Driftwood. I'm Bill. I'm John. I'm Linda. Somebody's, somebody's <laughs> Charles. Charles. <laughs> I'm Seth. And I'm Chris. <laughs> All right. And uh, welcome to another episode. And uh, today we're going to be talking about some interesting things. Um, we're going to talk about Doom Patrol. Uh, we'll talk about the new Lovecraft Country that's coming out. Uh, we're going to do a little uh, review of the first couple episodes, at least, of uh, Star Trek Lower Decks, the new animated Star Trek feature that's on CBS All Access. The cartoon. And the cartoon, as Linda and I like to refer to it. And um, just some other nerd news <clears throat> that uh, we've uh, dug out of the uh, the trenches for uh, for this episode. So um, I guess let's go ahead and get started. It looks, I think... Um, only Chris and I have really seen Star Trek Lower Decks. Um, I couldn't really get Linda to watch it yet because she doesn't like cartoons. Um, so I guess, Chris, we'll start with you. Uh, what's your general impression of two shows, two episodes in? Um, so two episodes in, I, I think when I commented with you uh, the last couple of weeks, I was kind of excited to see some more uh, episodes. I'd like to give it a chance. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it could be better, I think. I don't know if they're just trying to come out too much over the top a little bit with a lot of the, the jokes and the references to uh, right. all the previous Star Trek uh, series or films. And characters so, uh, and stuff. But I, I enjoy it. I like the humor quite a bit. But okay. um, it, I feel to some extent they're trying a little bit too hard. You know, maybe Family Guy, if they went to like 30 seasons or something, just starts to get a little bit tired. Right. Um, it feels a little bit like that, but I'd like to give it a chance. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I watched the first two episodes and, um, uh, you know, uh, I have to say I'm not a big fan at this point. Um, there's uh, some of it's humorous, but it seems like they're just trying to go for humor too much over story, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I was hoping that it would be more, um, more Rick and Morty ish, I guess, where, you know, yeah, there's, there's some fun humor in it, but there's also maybe a, a moral there or something that you can pull out of it. And this just seems to be more humor for humor's sake, rather than really something that makes you feel like, oh, okay, yeah, I understand what they're trying to say here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What do you think? Is that, was that true? No, I think, well, I think it's within the mark. So yeah. um, it, it's almost as if, you know, every other line that a character has, whether that's, um, if you haven't seen it, it kind of follows like four main characters there. There's Ensign Mariner, Ensign Boimler, Ensign Tendi, and looks like Ensign Ruth, Rutherford for names that you can't really remember. You spend yeah, right. time kind of going line to line as they try to find, you know, they're matching a story up to the jokes, basically, and not yeah. a story that happens to have some jokes in there. Right. Um, and that's really agree. hard. You can't really get get a story out of that. So, and to your to your point in the morals, like there's each episode did have did touch on that, but it was like for a solid thirty seconds or a minute. Yeah. On, you know, driving a point home, and then the rest was just one joke after another so i i think it's a symptom of just trying too hard or wanting to please all the other star trek fans out there with references to this that and the other but i think you can do that in little little drops and and you know spend more time narrating a story and right. give us those um nods towards generation or um discovery or deep space nine like you could drop all those little things in there um, right. It doesn't have to be so frequent. It seems like it's almost every other line. So yep. when and where is Lower Deck set? It's in the next gen time frame. So okay. Picard and the, the, the Enterprise D is out there. 
uh, somewhere um, Some going on. Her. And they, they reference, you know, the characters from that um, ship. Uh, I think there's actually one character on board that was on the Enterprise. They were joking about, you know, she brags about being on the Enterprise. And they're like, yeah, you were on there for like two days as part of a transfer yeah. or something, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, yeah, and there's a picture of the ship. It's the um, Cerritos. Cerritos, that's right. And um, so, you know, it's uh, I, you can probably judge, or at least Linda can judge by this. So usually when a new show comes out, if I'm really into it and I think it's good, or even if it's not good, necessarily but it's interesting or there's something redeeming in it mm -hmm. i will usually pester linda to watch it and have i been pestering you to watch this at all no, no. <laughs> and in fact even after episode two you know I, i've just been watching it by myself and um just because i want to see if it's going to evolve into something that's that's good and yeah. um so you know um i was like yeah what do we watch i, I I think I said the other night, well, you want to see what's going on with the, you want to catch up on the first two episodes? And she's like, not really. And I said, yeah, okay, I'm good with that. Because <laughs> I didn't really want to watch him a second time. There's catch up on, though. There's no, there's no real, right. you don't really get the sense it, of this developing story. Just Correct. from looking at it, it reminds me, It because remi I remember when the Star Trek cartoon, yeah. the first one came out. The original series cartoon? The original series cartoon, a long time, of, you know. Mm -hmm. And artistically they were already 10 or 20 years behind yeah <laughs> yeah i remember it bothered me because it's star trek right and yeah and this looks like the same well, it doesn't look like it's well, horrible that, that, horror, but... that animated show was star trek the scripts were star trek the acting was star trek the oh. animation was a bit weak yeah but yeah. it was actually a solid show that the, could uh, be but as a, as a kid i don't know i was pretty young when that uh of our audience that want to see it for free at least the first episode you can watch it on pluto tv which first I episode to, of Lower Decks or of Lower Decks? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, this week um, until the it's got several showing times up until Wednesday, August nineteenth, where you can okay. see the first episode for free. Have so you watched it? Have you watched time? the first one, John, or yet? Or yeah, no? they list time here. I have an article. I actually I haven't watched yet, but uh, the first <laughs> showing today on Pluto is six p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So oh, okay. I have I would have to actually watch it at a set time. I, I, I you, since you don't done. really seem to feel the need to watch <laughs> things to comment, I mean, you don't have to, but it's like most of us generally like to actually watch things before well, we read them. No, I'm, I'm more referencing the fact that you'd actually have to tune in at a time. Right, rather than just streaming at oh, your leisure. Welcome to the 70s, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's how it goes. Those our baby. lives. <laughs> like, that doesn't sound fun at all. It wasn't. I thought we were over that. <laughs> so did I, but uh, it's like, apparently not. Uh, yeah, but I think, I, to, to the earlier point, there's not a whole lot to talk about because they haven't given you a whole lot to talk about at the end Correct. of the day. Correct. Yeah, but like, I went through this whole week completely forgetting to even go back to watch episode two. I got up this morning and was like, oh, I guess I should, I should watch that because there was no <laughs> compelling. I wonder what happens next. It's just, right. You can, exactly. You I was the same way. No, I like no, how you put that, incident, huh? No. Cisco didn't find a wormhole. No. Uh, they right. didn't run into Q. No. Nothing that makes you go, that's like, oh, I want to see it's, the second episode of that. It's, it's like I said, like with, with Family Guy, you can almost just turn on any episode in any part during the series and it's just, they yeah. just start running there and it's whatever. There's I mean, maybe that's what they're, maybe that's what they want to go for is The Simpsons yeah. but Star Trek and they're just <laughs> hoping that... Uh, they get some initial momentum to carry them through to 30 seasons. Well, they build it like it was Rick and Morty in Star Trek. And right. Mm -hmm. Well, they yeah, they said it. they got the Rick and Morty. The guys that worked on Rick and Morty were the creative geniuses behind the stories on this. Um, but so far, I'm not right. seeing it. But, yeah, they could. I mean, there's so much more they could do and try to – they want – never-ending mindless content i mean they could they could stop trying so hard on it and maybe have episodes that are more related to 
the day-to-day -day current events that we deal with now, political struggles or sure. whatever, um, yeah. that would make more sense to me in terms of something that just can keep going um, mm -hmm. for a series. This is like they're going to run out of content in Wait, one they, season. I think as a marginal, like as a person that doesn't, I don't really like cartoons either for the most part. But, like, uh, you watch something like Rick and Morty, and you go, okay, this might be better as a cartoon than it would be. Like, it's so, it'd be so complicated to do the special effects. Yeah. Coming from dimension to dimension and blah, 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 you know. Yeah. That it, it okay, the cartoon's the best genre for it, probably. Sure. And so, and the same goes for a lot of anime stuff. It's so complicated. That to have it be visual, just I, it, you know, yeah. you can see it not working. Well, and so what was are, this? Was there anything about this that was doesn't sound like it? Sounds it like was it redeeming. Was, yeah, that was like okay. Well, this had to be a cartoon, or this had to be no. There's nothing. No, not really. If, if you wanted, if you wanted to see Star Trek in a more adultish theme, um, with uh, you know more gore, blood splatters, whatever. I mean, yeah, you can get that with a little bit of comedy. It's just, I'd rather they just take it to the extreme at that point or, you know, not trying to find yeah. the middle ground there. Yeah, I mean, Charles, you've seen the Orville, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And John, I know John, Seth, you've seen the Orville and Chris, you've probably seen it. I, I, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, okay. It's on an outstanding to do for me, but I was going to bring up the Orville and that, you know, Orville's a live action, probably better production from what I've heard of it, with an actual kind of story to go along right. with that's comedy based. And this right. is right. This so, is a mark from an animated point. Yeah, I I almost going into this was expecting something more along the lines of the Orville, where, mm -hmm. you know, there would be a story with some purpose, some something to pass on, some information to provide you with that gives you a uh, something to think about. And with, you know, humor in the appropriate spot, sort of like the way mm -hmm. the Orville does it. And uh, it's just, oh, it, it's, it's not that at all. It's, it's just constant attempts at humor throughout the whole thing th with a bunch of gore thrown in. Um, mm -hmm. I think the first episode, um, they brought back some virus on the ship and it turns the whole crew into zombies and there's just oh. blood <laughs> flying everywhere. And, oh my God. and uh, they're in the sick bay and the, the doctor is a, a feline, uh, right? Yep. A cat. And yep. uh, she's digging in some patient's body and she says, here, hold this guy's heart while it's still beating, you know, and <laughs> she's in working on him and, and it's just, you know, it's just like, just gore for gore's sake, it almost seems. Um, and so, yeah, so far I have not been impressed with it. So, so we'll have to see where that goes. Couple couple things. Yeah. Uh, the feline is a Katian from right. the, that they introduced in the original animated series, I believe. Right. That's not right. Katian, uh -huh. it's Katian. Katian, C-A-I-T-I-A-N. It the should be Katian. Asian. Either way, it's basically cat alien. Right. Aw. So, like here, it really sounds like what you're describing really is kind of along the lines of the Family Guy. Yes. That's what I feel oh, like. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I would like say, yeah. It's like Family Guy, but Star Trek. It's like, it's, <laughs> I'm really interested in Lower Decks. I am not interested enough to pay for CBS All Access <laughs> while they release it one week at a time. Right. This is so, one of those... Yeah. I think this I, is one of those... Like, Access should probably have gone with the Netflix model where they just drop an entire season. Well, they're trying, to, they're trying to keep people strung along so they don't bulk watch it and then drop their membership. And, and how can I they know, drop but that's what I'm going to do anyway. How can they drop... And then not drop like the rest of them. Right. Because, I mean, you know, uh, I imagine there's a lot of people, if you wanted to see something, you just wait till they were all out, get a membership for a month, mm -hmm. binge it, and then drop your membership. That was my plan. I'm, that's yeah. my plan. I'm just going to wait until it's all out, get a membership yeah. for a month, binge it, 
So, watch so any what you guys are saying, I haven't seen yet. Is right. that that this this show is is basically fundamentally bad? So far, I'm not. I'm well, I mean, not... I, I, what Chris said is basically first episode, and it feels like it's already a tired franchise. That's yeah, that's, that's what. Yeah, that's I hilarious. feel like. Yeah, and well, that's unfortunate. I want to give it a chance because some sometimes I I don't know. I'm assuming it's probably all already written. I don't know if they'll have feedback enough to start changing some of the episodes or not. But from the way it started out, I don't know how you slow it down and actually start building on a story or you just let that first season kind of crash and burn. And then you come out with a season two that's improved based off of feedback. I'd like to give it a chance because we've not seen an attempt like this other than maybe the Orville, which is my <laughs> action, but Dude, I want to see it do better. That's know? kind of why i think that the week by week thing is going to hurt it because if it does find its feet later on in the season like maybe it's got a couple week week episodes at the start maybe it got fireflied where the the higher ups of the network went now release them in this order as opposed to the what mm -hmm. dan Harmon and uh almost other I, I I don't I don't ever pay attention to the background business of everything, you know. But it almost sounds to me like there was some executive in the background that's really pissed that the Orville wasn't funny, <laughs> <laughs> and he finally just went, "Make this one funny, damn it!" <laughs> the Orville, you know the Orville got canceled, right? I didn't know that it did. Yeah. Why? Oh, season, wow. three, season three is going to show up on Hulu, but then there's no there's no plans for more. Uh -huh. Oh wow! Huh? Well, I mean, they might give it more if it's still successful on Hulu. Well, I, I, it's like I can't see why another uh, streaming service wouldn't want to pick it up because it's it's really popular. But yeah, it it's, may happen. That's not, it wouldn't be the first show to have that happen. Where just another right. service is, uh, uh, is Lower Decks kind of an indication that CBS is again dropping the ball because they don't seem to be able to get their act together. Picard lost half its audience before the end of the season. It's but it was so good, though. Watching like, Picard, it was really good. I, I, was, I don't, I don't I understand. The, the people don't seem to agree with you on that one, Bill. And I don't know why. No, this is, once again... Picard, people think it is. It's like, CBS has a golden goose, and it does not seem to be able to cultivate Star Trek. And it's like, Paramount mm. is now... They're saying they're going to... Uh, evaluate the direction of future Star Trek films, which means basically they're considering dropping the. the, the maybe they should. I mean, well, hmm. John, this might be once again what I'm talking about is they're releasing week by week, and they're not big enough to keep people around like HBO is. And so they they people may, like might have dropped out of Picard halfway through because that's when they're. Free membership expired month the first month mm. of subscription ran out and they were right. like right this well, is the only thing i watch on this channel i just found something six days ago that said that's never been corroborated by a second source so oh really yeah what, what? that, that it lost half its audience ah and like i'm just saying uh they've uh, i would be interested to see the numbers uh well, I'd just be interested to see the what numbers they pulled in on Picard because it was really, really good. It was, and they but, and after the first couple of episodes, they green lighted a second season already. So but before it was I even done airing, I just can't get behind CBS. Uh, CBS's uh, one at a time, one yeah. at a time well, thing. They aren't yeah. big enough. They don't. Well, oh, that's the way show. HBO does it. Yep. Yeah, HBO's but HBO's is... got a ton of content yeah. that yeah, other true. That yeah. you want to see. Yeah, HBO didn't build their build their platform based off of that. I mean, it's all a bunch of movies and everything else. True. Yeah. Right. True. Yeah, CBS All Access has had Picard running at that time. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. Right. That's yeah. all they had. Mm -hmm. They had yeah, stuff of point. Star Trek, which you can still find on Amazon Instant Video. They had and Discovery, I th mm -hmm. and then I mean, as far as but they and they had a whole bunch of non sci fi stuff, which for someone coming there for Star mm -hmm. Trek isn't a draw, right? 
Yeah, I've actually called CBS All Access uh, to cancel my membership twice. And uh, uh, after uh, Picard was over, I called and they said, they said, well, now hold on. How about if we give it to you half price for the next two months? We've got, you know, the Twilight Zone coming out. They've got all this stuff coming out. And I said, yeah, all right, for half price. So I'm getting it for like four ninety nine. So then those two months were up. And then I'm like, yeah, no, no sign on when Discovery's coming out. And I'm like, I can wait to see the cartoon till some other time, you know. So I called him up again and I said, yeah, um, I'm going to cancel. And they said, well, I'll tell you what, how about if we give it to you for four ninety nine for two months? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've got Star Trek Lower Decks coming out. And, and have you seen the Twilight Zone yet? Yeah, I've seen that. Well, what about, yeah, I've seen that. And they're like, well, we'll give it to you for two months. Check it out. So anyway, I think. Uh, I you think... called to cancel? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, when yeah. you call to cancel, you get all kinds of offers. <laughs> yeah, because you can cancel online. But if you cancel online, okay. you just cancel. But if you call places and tell them you're going to cancel, then usually they come out with an offer to try to keep you around. So yeah. the first time I called and I'm like, I'm going to call and, and cancel. And, oh, I think that was right about the time Linda got furloughed and I got my hours cut. And I'm like, I'm just, we're just really not watching it now that Picard's over. So I called him and they said, well, how about, you know, four ninety nine for two months? And I'm like, <laughs> all right, well, we're going to be sitting home a lot more. Maybe it'll be worth it, you know, just to hang on to it for four ninety nine a month. So we did. And then, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm just not really watching it. So then I called them and then they extended it again for another two months. But um, I don't know. I think uh, the only thing I'm really looking forward to on CBS All Access right now is uh, Star Trek Discovery, which is due to start uh, October 15th. Think now, would you maintain your subscription for three, four months for just Discovery? Probably. Well, if they <laughs> give it to me for four ninety nine, I probably yeah. would, just to avoid that, the hassle of trying to sign up again. But like that might be like what they're worth then, like yeah. per month. Yeah. What's yeah, because the nine ninety, it's it, so you they've got two packages. One is like four ninety nine, I think, is the package. Yeah. But yeah, that package gives you commercials. But then there's a nine ninety nine package, which is commercial free. So I'm basically getting the commercial the free. Commercial free, I think. What's that? It's not all content, but most content is commercial free in the nine ninety. Oh, okay. Wait, most sure. content is coming. Yeah, there's free? a thing on that because I almost uh, I almost signed up for it until I saw that it wasn't 100 percent commercial. I've oh, never no, seen a no, commercial. No, 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 that's bullshit <laughs> me, right me, there. Have yeah. we ever seen maybe, a commercial? I don't think we have. Watching. I haven't seen any commercials yet, at least on the stuff we've been watching. I no commercials. No if, if one sneaks through, there's no commercials. Uh, <laughs> Twilight <laughs> Zone, <laughs> none on any of the Star Trek stuff that I've watched. Yeah. If I so, if I pay for no commercials and I and I see a commercial on there, I'll cancel that's it. immediately. Right. Well, yeah, I don't because I I'm and, thinking it was CBS. I don't remember if it was CBS or Hulu, but one of those I I originally did the no commercial, and it drove me nuts, like almost immediately. I've forgotten how much I hate commercials. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, no, but I'm canceling and getting the nine ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on the show. So you can you can likely run across a bunch that do not, but live streams is understandable. Live streams like the local TV station Twitter route commercials and due to streaming rights, oh. the shows actually still play with promotional interruptions. I got you. So if they're carrying content that's being live aired on yeah, another live station. Content, and then there's a few shows there they can't not have their sure. promotional interruptions. Oh. Okay. That makes well, sense. some somehow we got into streaming services again, so Maybe you want to talk about Doom Patrol. <laughs> yeah, um, we can move on to that. I um, thought there was something else I was going to say about Star Trek, but maybe not. All right, well, let's move on. So uh, Doom Patrol. So Linda and I are into season two. Um, and let's see. No spoilers. No spoilers. No, um, not on this because yeah. Katie and I are halfway through season one. And Chris, you're about four epi four or five yeah, episodes in. Yeah, four or five episodes in. I started last night. Okay. Yeah. So um, Doom Patrol is kind of a story about uh, some manufactured <laughs> superheroes, we can say, right? No. Um, and um, no, they've, 
What's that, Seth? I would say it's much more a story about uh, kind of outcast metahumans. Okay, yep. Because o- only one of them was built. That's true. true. Yeah. Well, uh, it's more kind of, <laughs> the, kind of the freaks and geeks who don't fit into the... So, I well, would yeah, say... I guess two of them were built. So two of them. Well, right. well, okay. Uh, since you're not as far as Linda and I are yet, oh. I'll give well, you that. I, all right. Well, either way, there's more to the story. So, which you'll which you'll see as it moves on. But anyway, uh, so it's it's interesting. It's it's uh, it's a lot of uh, uh, character story, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, there's um, in the first episode or two, there's a lot of um, battling. You get to meet the super villain um, of season one. Um, Mr. Nobody, played this, by Alan Tudyk. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he does a great job. Of yeah. course. He yeah. is, oh man, I love Alan Tudyk in everything he does. Yeah, and the um, the woman that plays Jane, um, I think she does a very good job too. So she's got uh, multiple personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, 64, I think. Six okay. personalities, each one with their own unique superpower. Right. Yeah. And um, so, uh, so she's very interesting because you never know what you're going to get or who might pop up and do something. Yeah, she's never really in complete control of the person. No. Now, in my mind, and I know, John, you haven't seen this, but I almost see Jane as the... Um, oh fuck! Now it's slipping my mind. What's the term for the the part that can do anything that solves any crisis in the a MacGuffin? The MacGuffin. Jane's mm. kind of like the MacGuffin because whenever they get into a predicament that seems unextractable, suddenly a new personality emerges with mm-hmm. the ability to resolve the issue or something. I, so I'd say it's more of a Deus Ex Machina. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. I'll give you that. And uh, so, so that's kind of my, my deal with Jane. Um, of course, uh, Cliff. Um, speaking, the robot, of the, speaking of the F-bomb you just dropped a little while ago, that's the only word that comes out of this guy's mouth. Uh, Cliff, yeah, the robot. He's, <laughs> oh, my he loves, God. He loves the F-word, and that's all he does. Oh. Of course, you know, given his backstory, he was a race car driver. Yep. Uh, he was uh, on his way home. Have you guys seen how he, the crash? Anyway, there was a yeah, car crash. That comes out in the first episode. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So there was a car crash. Uh, his uh, wife and daughter were killed. Um, and uh, he was almost killed. About the only thing they were able to save was his brain. And um, so. Played by Brendan Fraser, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Brendan yeah. Fraser. Brain. And he's so and good too. He's yeah. so he's so funny. Oh he my is God. hilarious. Yes. And so they saved his brain, and the the mad scientist put it into a robot body. So um, he's, got, uh, he's got he's uh, got a lot of uh, a lot of strength, of course, because of that. But right. also a lot of psychological issues because he's, again, he's a brain in a robot body. So well, I think I think that's kind of the link between them all is that they yeah. all have kind of psychological issues. You've got uh, Mr. Robot, uh, Brendan Fraser, Cliff, Brendan Fraser's yep. character, yes. who's dealing with this horrible trauma. He basically spent seven years being turned into a robot by this right. guy. Right. And <laughs> lost his family. You've right. got uh, the actress whose name I yes. can't remember, who whenever she gets stressed, she just like melts and turns into a blob. April Balby. Balby? April Balby? Yeah. yeah. You've uh, got uh, yeah. the ex-pilot who's inhabited by some otherworldly energy like, yeah. being who he doesn't really get along with, but he's been horribly scarred because it made him crash. You know? <laughs> right. Right, and he's and he's highly radioactive, so he has to wear this, this these specially treated bandages that prevent the radioactivity from leaking out and killing anybody he's around. 
And then you've also got uh, Vic. Vic. Well, hmm? Vic. 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 Yeah, he's got. He's got some daddy issues. Who's he's also got a robot uh, body? He no, goes yeah. by the the handle Cyclops. But Cyclops? He's got Cyborg? Cyclops. Or Cyborg. 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 That's it. Sorry. Cyborg. I, I struggle I struggle with this character because it's it's really born out of it's a different it's cyborg from like Justice League, but not. It's a different different take on it. It's more of a the Teen Titan approach. It's he's very right. young. Uh you know immature i would almost say yeah um really trying to take over as um as kind of a group leader when he's introduced and tries to get these guys going in one direction and it just comes off as is interesting at least to me i i get it um yeah. i'm just used to i'm trying to adjust from the justice league cyborg to yeah. this cyborg mm -hmm. yeah this is definitely a cyborg that's trying to break out and be his own person mm -hmm. Yeah, and right. and he they do reference the Justice League in this show because yeah. uh, uh, Vic does anyway, yep. um, um, and his uh, his father I think was trying to groom him for bigger and better things, right? In the Justice yeah, League, yeah, he, he says at one point in there like, hey, you know, I think maybe in another five years or something like that, you'll be ready for the Justice League or something, right? He's trying right. to like groom him for that and shows his immaturity; he's not ready yet, you right? Know, kind of thing, but. He's definitely out to strike out on his own. So, yeah. Yeah. Rita Farr is the girl, is the yeah. lady that's um, second from the right there. Um, and she's the one that they mentioned that, you know, um, she uh, turns into a blob. She got attacked by some sea creature when she was making a, a swamp creature movie. She got atta mm -hmm. actually attacked by something in the swamp. And, and so as a result, she has the ability to, her body blob. can melt into a blob. Yeah, it's not really an ability. Um, yeah, It just happens to her. Yeah. So yeah. I haven't seen her exert much control over it. Yeah. You won't until season two, so. Um, and then Psycho. <laughs> psych, psycho? Oh, yeah. The, so Jane, the, she's the yeah. one on the far right in the picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she's the one with the 64 personalities who live in this uh, place in her mind they call the underground. And think of it like a uh, underground subway it's got a like a subway train that can uh -huh. take the different personalities up to the surface and um, so we're starting to starting to get to know quite a few of them um, they're not all nice and nope. she does a really good job of portraying them too like when yes. she oh, yes. yeah. personality yeah. shifts yeah you can like, really tell I think yeah. the acting of on all of them is pretty good right I agree they're all I, I, they're all unique right, in that way. Yeah. See, I love how, just like how much uh, personality uh, that Brendan Fraser gives to Cliff, oh my even God, though he's in a robot body. Like, yeah. you can tell his emotions just by like how he moves and like Yeah, tilts his, his head. head and, yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. And I love his reactions to all this because that's like, yeah, you what? Get that. what? What? <laughs> yeah, just like in that first episode, it's like, what the fuck is nope. going on? <laughs> you just, what? yeah, he, I think, was it, was it, I think it was, yeah, it was Jane, one of her, Jane's personalities yeah. came out and, and threw, oh. so they've got like a bus they drive around in the Doom bus, <laughs> and she just grabs the Doom bus and throws it into this giant sinkhole that opened in the middle of town that became like this whirling vortex created by Mr. Nobody that was sucking the town in, and she just takes the bus and just hurls it into the into the uh, vortex, and Cliff's like, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? We just <laughs> threw the bus, yep. and our chief, the, uh, the chief is played by... Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton. Yep. And um, he's, he's like, you just threw the bus with our chief in it into the fucking vortex. <laughs> you know? See, did she throw it? I Like, when I saw it, I thought it got I think, I think it got sucked she in. She was trying to, to stop, stop it. it. And it got sucked oh, in. Oh, that could be. But then she, maybe I'm she remembering it wrong. So. It's been a while yeah, since I've seen that first yeah, one. There's a lot of good scenes like that. There's the effing donkey. You know, yes. Oh my god! She, somebody had to go up the donkey's butt. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, the I like the or uh, Alan Tudyk's character, Mister Nobody, is the narrator 
Sorry, yeah. Yeah, at yeah. least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, he's very much kind of a Deadpool-esque character who knows they're in a show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and whether that's because he's completely crazy or not, we don't know yet. But <laughs> well, the first episode ends with this donkey like walking out of nowhere and then just huge donkey fart and then at the end of the or the beginning of the second episode he's just like yes here we are back for episode two for all the fans the three who sticks <laughs> still with us around the donkey, the yes. donkey fart. <laughs> that, yeah that part i was just i was sold i was like all right well we're gonna buckle down and start pawing through this series <laughs> yeah and he does a lot more of that and uh the funny thing is as you get to the uh the end of episode one um it's rita farr's character uh or rita farr the the character um she uh uh, mr nobody's screwing with him and uh they're all kind of separated and he's doing the narration and you know whatever he narrates seems to happen to each of them and then rita farr because she's an actress and she knows that medium you know of the storytelling medium right she says well, wait a minute, if he can do this, I can do this. So then she starts doing her own narration and twisting the story. And he's like, what? You can't, you, I'm the narrator. You can't take this away from me. And, it, and she just keeps going on and on and it just changes the whole story. And uh, so, it, yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Um, so, yeah, you'll see a lot more of that kind of thing going on with him, yep. you know, talking to the audience and stuff, which is great, I think. So, and uh, man, the, the things that happen to this, these people as the season goes on, I mean, it's just one more improbable, bizarre twist uh, upon another, really. And mm-hmm. it, you, it almost got to the point where I started watching it because uh, I couldn't look away. I'm like, right. what are they going to do? How, what, what, where is this going? Right, where is it going? Yeah. A lot <laughs> you of know? That's one thing. You'll, you'll definitely miss some of the little details if you're not focusing on it they right they rarely leave you know other than maybe some of the flashbacks they rarely leave opportunities to kind of step away and grab a grab a drink or anything like that and like you, you right glued to your seat you're glued to the screen uh because you don't want to miss the next little quip that comes out or, or whatever so you might miss a running joke you know right yeah. Yeah, sometimes Linda and I will uh, watch an episode over lunch while we're fixing, you know, while we're having lunch. And sometimes it'll be going on and I'll turn to to get something to fix lunch or make a sandwich or whatever. And something will happen, I'll turn back and I'll say, what, wait, wait, wait. Oh, shit, I got to go back. <laughs> yep, what the hell? How did we get here? How'd that happen? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah so, some of these, go ahead. I was going to say it's it's really good. I would recommend people watch it. I think you'll I think you'll be really entertained by it. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the DC shows that they're coming out with are just always like I I want to watch them all. Like mm-hmm. cuz I think that's where DC is really shining is their is, television program. What would you say is missing when they try and bring it to the big screen cuz they seem to have it right when it comes to shows like this but they can't seem to translate it into those big blockbuster movies. See, I've I, enjoyed the movies. Lately, but like, though, lately they have been hitting those big blockbuster movies. Like Wonder weird. Woman and uh, Aquaman and Shazam. Those were all pretty on the lines of, along the lines of what I like to watch. It's more of the Zack Schneider dark, gritty... Making Batman, Superman kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, making no Justice League more into the Watchmen where they lose me. Let's mm-hmm. not judge Justice yeah. League until the the Schneider cut. Schneider cut. cut. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, but adding more Zack Schneider I to the Justice one. League is not going to make it a movie that I want to see. We don't know that. I do. I want to like, see it. Everyone has, everyone's almost religious about this Zack Schneider Justice League cut. And he doesn't get Superman, he doesn't get Batman, and he's not going to make a Justice let, League. Let me tell you a story about Watchmen, the movie Watchmen that Schneider did. I watched that movie, and I thought it was okay. And then I watched the Schneider cut, the extended director's cut, where it's like almost three hours long. And it made sense. And I figured out Zack Snyder makes three-hour movies. And then for some reason, someone decides that's too long. And they start cutting it up. And they always cut out stuff you need. So, so, so I want to see 
Zack Schneider and made Snyder Zach, cut of, of Zach Justice. Schneider makes Zack Schneider movies. The reason he was good for Watchmen is because that's the type of story he likes to tell. He wasn't good. The original so, cut that came out was not that good. The full cut, if you leave all of Zack yeah, stuff in, yeah. it's good. When you start cutting it down, you don't get the full picture of what he was doing. Yeah, you don't. So, I, so I've seen both versions, and I didn't like <laughs> like it the first time I saw it, and I was okay with it the second time I saw it. But he still like he still doesn't get Superman, he doesn't get Batman, and he doesn't get the DC universe. Like he's the wrong person to make DC universe movies. John, would you watch a Schneider cut of Under the Skin? Uh, no. I'm actually envisioning in my head what that would look like. <laughs> <laughs> just, just more riding around in the car. Yeah, it, it would. It, that's literally it, Linda. It would, be, <laughs> it would be more driving in a van. Some extra motorcycle guys that we don't know what they do. It, it, was, it would be, yeah, it would be just more of that. It's like, yeah, the extended 45 minute drive through the countryside with no. Yeah, that's what that would be. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> Since we're on DC, why did DC dump so many comics this week? Probably because it's just mean a bad economy them? right now. Like yo, you mean they canceled them? They they discontinued a number of, mm. of like Teen Titans for one. Wow. Mm. Um, if you don't have money for comics. It's kind of hard to sell the comics. Well. I mean, what what happened to get them to this point? Worldwide COVID nineteen. <laughs> well, twenty. I'd figure with COVID nineteen, people would read more comics. It's not if they don't have money for them. That's, That's true. true. <laughs> that is true. That is sad. But Marvel like hasn't reported closing down titles. Who? Marvel. Marvel? I thought they did. Did they? But Marvel's got did. that. Marvel's got that Disney money. Well, Disney's, Disney's kind of upset that it doesn't have the Disney money anymore, so I don't know if Marvel has no, it. No, Disney's still got the Disney money. They've got a war chest that rivals Apple's. If not, I, yeah, I imagine. Season. Probably literally Nazi gold somewhere. But yeah. Hmm. All right, well, shall we move on? Um, one of the things uh, I wanted to mention um, is that uh, we've got a, a big premiere tonight on HBO Max. Uh, Lovecraft Country, uh, which looks really good. Uh, just a brief uh, premise. Uh, Lovecraft Country follows Atticus Freeman as he joins up with his friend Letitia and his uncle George to embark on a road trip across 1950s Jim Crow America in search of his missing father. This begins a struggle to survive and overcome both the racist terrors of white America and the terrifying monsters that could be ripped from a Lovecraft paperback. So um, I think this looks pretty good. I'm looking forward to it. What do you, you've seen the trailer? I take it, Chris. Yeah, I'm going to be watching that tonight and kind of go, you know, just see where it goes. It. So yeah, see where it goes. Yeah. Now it's um, in the the CBS model. Um, they're just releasing one episode a week, so um, it'll be a while before we get into the story enough to really have a good take on what's going on right. but um i think it i think it's got a lot of promise there based on the trailer that i've seen yeah the trailer made it i mean the production quality looked excellent it just looks like it's going to be good but we'll all have to, we'll find out tonight you know right. how, how good it's going to be i mean if you want to actually know the whole story ahead of time you could read the book that it's based on by matt ruff uh, do, do you know, is it supposed to follow the book pretty closely then? I do not know if it follows, how closely it's going to follow the book. Okay. I don't have uh, time to read that. <laughs> I was, I was, so have you read the book, Seth? Sadly, I have not. It's on my extremely lengthy TBR list. It is upstairs in my library. Has Katie read it? I think so. Okay. As I noticed you said she was really looking forward to it, and I, I, based on that, I was thinking, oh, maybe she read the book. So 
Yeah, Katie's on board for anything that's Lovecraft inspired. Right, she, right. She loves that weird fiction stuff. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to as well as that that twist on it. So, I'm just wondering where Lovecraft comes into this because, uh, well, don't that looks like, like it. Though. Yeah, I don't Probably. know if he's a character in it or if it's just that Atticus likes reading his stories. And stories. Why like would Atticus that? like reading his stories? It's like because people like reading weird fiction. All right. Did Lovecraft find it manage to keep out his white supremacy in his in most of his writings, or what? No. <laughs> That's what oh, I'm saying. No. It's like, why would someone of African American descent want to read? Well, the, Lovecraft the, wasn't the only one who was writing those kind of stories. This is true, but he was he was he was what sociologists call uh, um, super racist. Uh, all around or all weather bigot. Which means the kind of the kind of racist that tells you they're racist, which is actually in some ways more comforting because you know exactly where they stand rather than being one of those Weasley racists. But he was right there. He, he was, was up front, you know? but he was only one of a great many uh, authors in the kind of the, that weird fiction space, and a lot of other authors uh, who he was even writing to would borrow from his universe or fictional universe or add to it so I mean, oh, he was love, brilliant and i mean for a show that's gonna be tackling some racism head-on lovecraft is a great way to start like yeah. you've gotta like there's there oh yeah you i've read a few of his stories and whoo boy the guy's racist <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Just yeah, it's like okay. I see where you're. Yeah, I okay. see. It, I see you right there, HP. Hmm. That's cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm interested to see what the reaction will be to this the stories here because I imagine um, they're going to paint a paint a pretty stark picture of racism in the fifties. And um, I well, yeah. Look at that right there. There's a, <laughs> look yeah. at that. There it is. Yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is to that. Um, For our audio listeners, we're looking at a picture of a cross burn, burning in front, in front of an old uh, Victorian style mansion. I guess um, yes. I, the show takes place, I think, in the Chicago's area. Is that right? It starts off there, I believe. Okay. And then it goes. Uh, kind of into oh man I don't have the review up in front of me here okay well by the time we do um, our uh, next uh, Galactic Driftwood podcast episode we'll have should have uh, New England is where it moves two episodes under our belt at least so maybe we can comment a little bit further on what's going on um just makes me wonder what kind of reaction we'll see from different groups like, you know, the sad puppies and such. Was there much of a reaction from the Watchmen? <clears throat> I mean, I, I would have missed. You know, I don't know. I mean, I know I there know was, that. but I don't know. It, it, it's all seemed, not from the sad puppies and stuff, but it seemed like the Watchmen happened and then they were going to start teaching, um, teaching about the Tulsa events. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, and I assume those were related, but I don't know. I don't know what. I never read anything about groups or support of the movie or support of the series or hatred of the series or anything. So, does someone want to tell our audience who the Sad Pumpies are? I think Go we ahead, John. covered that in detail. We have in the past. I mean, John, if you just want to give them up a, a brief reminder well, for somebody that may be just tuning in for the first time, the Sad Pumpies are kind of a right-wing anti-diversity uh, movement in sci-fi that uh, keeps popping up, um, uh, throwing uh, people of color who write, women who write. Uh, they kind of... It, 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 they, they, it, and they it's not... To... Yeah, and it's not just those those types of authors that they're against. They're also against changing the traditional sci-fi tropes where you have 
you know, um, a white male uh, protagonist that leads yeah. the story. You know, these would be, you know, people of color or people with different sexual orientations or whatever that are the new protagonists of the story. And they're, they're fully against that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely an anti-diverse diversity group. That's, that's, yeah, we have, like made up said, we've talked about them before. Yeah, they, they were prim they're primarily they were primarily uh, founded to influence the the Hugo Awards. Hugo Awards. Yeah. Well, they're the same people that pop up and get mad at uh, Captain Marvel's uh, Brie Larson's Captain Marvel simply because Brie Larson is a woman. It's like, right. Um, and they don't want smiles. diversity. They want the good old white boys club. Right. That's pretty much it. I don't know that the, they're sadly far too prevalent in nerd culture. And yeah. they'll probably have something to say about this. And it, it'll all be couched in, oh, it's bad writing, or I don't like these actors. But it's all just mm -hmm. usually an excuse of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, cool. Well, we'll have to uh, follow up in our next episode uh, based on what we think of the first few. Um, mm -hmm. So um, we'll start that. That starts tonight. And then uh, future episodes released every week on Sundays on HBO. So that'll be exciting. Um, and then um, I think, uh, John, you had some other nerd news that you had posted out there. Do you want to lead us into any particular... Well, yes. Story. Pretty much talking about that earlier, but it's like I do. Let me. Oh, we were going to talk about Italian Spider Man as well. Oh, yeah. God. Yes, let's not forget that, that none of us really know about other than it exists. Well, yeah, it's like <laughs> there's only so much Italian Spider Man you can watch before, you know, it starts really. It, I feel that if I actually finished the movie, it would like ruin me. <laughs> so it's basically it's it's a parody on spider-man but it was also done in the 1970s in uh, italy which tells i guess you right which tells you right there and, if you made uh, if you made jeremy into spider-man that's what you'd have you'd have italian spider-man literally jeremy ron jeremy oh yes <laughs> yes Ooh, this is bad Ooh. this is bad it, 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 are you watching a little is bad. clip yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, it's hilarious. Get a good and picture. I'm trying to find a good picture. It's just so the Italian so Spider-Man doesn't even have the, <laughs> the full Spider-Man outfit. He's basically just got like a red shirt, uh, red yeah. turtleneck with a spider on it, For right? And then he wears like a Lone Ranger mask because obviously you wouldn't want to cover up his fantastic mustache. That which... porn stash has to be seen. <laughs> it does, but it it's... is it is a Ron Jeremy oh. stash. Here, it so is, fun. and yeah. he, he like he womanizes, he drinks, he smokes cigars he uses guns <laughs> yes and and the thing that i that i couldn't believe is so he's in this lair of this evil doer or something and they're playing blackjack and the stakes are if the guy loses blackjack the evil guy is going to kill him right so the so there's a lot of suspense over the final cards and so you've got a dealer there that's, that's <laughs> there's there's uh, italian spider-man so you've got a dealer there that's you know, handing them the cards. And so after the end result, um, uh, the, the battle starts where the, the evil guy and Italian Spider-Man are trying to kill each other. And Italian Spider-Man pulls out a shotgun and just starts blasting people. And he turns the shotgun on the card dealer who has no weapons and is just standing there and hasn't done anything but deal cards and just blasts him, kills him with a shotgun. That's yeah. like he's I got think, no respect for human life at all. He'll just I, kill you. I think this picture is perfect because it's blurry, so it screams seventies, right? This is as good <laughs> yeah. as it got. Yeah. The guy's uh, got a stain on his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, I'm reading here. It is a 2007 Australian parody of cheesy 60s and 70s Italian action movies. They did mm. good. So it's from 2007. Yeah. Right. Just made to look like it's from the 70s. Yeah. And very campy. So bad. No, it gets worse. It's like he really he's he's really a womanizer. He's just he's he's like he's he's the kind of womanizer you can't be anymore, if you know what I mean. 
It's right. like, yeah, I can I can see that, and there's just even skimming through it, some of this is bad. Just bad. Bad. now, I think okay, don't watch it. Don't now. What sent us down that wow. rabbit hole was Japanese Spider Man. Is that what started it? That's what oh, started right. the whole thing. We were talking right? about uh, that night. That that was like a 1970s show. Yes, right, right. right done in japan and they had licensed uh the spider-man <laughs> character so that they can, man. yeah supida man and uh, already better yes yeah. and, <laughs> and the funny thing about supida man is that he he has this race car that he drives that actually parks inside of what is like a giant you know uh transformer kind of a robot it's a giant robot called leopardon hey is this like spider-man meets power rangers what's that? yes it, yes yes that. that's it pretty was, much it and it there's was, uh, one of the spin-off uh uh shows from the popularity of oh god spider-verse not spider-verse this was this far preceded spider-verse yeah uh mm -hmm. this, like the old Oh, I'm failing all my words. Gundam stuff, or no? It's the what? What you call the the fighting in giant monsters in mecha home, thing? Yeah, the oh, like the kaiju kind of stuff, or yeah, like the Godzilla started with type. Godzilla. Yeah, and yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of this giant robot guy that that Spider Man's in fighting these. You know, guys costumed up like giant, you know, Godzilla type creatures, well, and uh, yeah, and then there's also uh, uh, there's also a lot of acrobatics there in the different episodes. You know, flips and twirls, and they're always like looped three or four times. So the guy does a flip, and it'll just repeat, almost like the record stuck, three or four times before it moves on because they're so proud of the the acrobatics that they did. I guess. He um, did it. He did it. Yeah. We're so, so proud. Yeah, it's it's uh you so, can you can see some of the examples of uh some of the clips from uh Spider Man on um YouTube. So uh what one of the fun thing well, something I love about this is that a few years ago there was there was a big comic event called uh, Spider Verse, with, that brought together where Marvel basically said every version of Spider Man that we've ever done it's anywhere candy. exists in the multiverse, and they found a comic reason to bring them all together to fight this uh, multiversal threat that was hunting Spider Man, and they brought in Spider Man, <laughs> <laughs> who. God. Like all, all up until this point, there it was like a big brawl between a bunch of the bad guys and a bunch of different, wildly different Spider Men, mm -hmm. and then this guy comes in with a giant robot, and everyone's like, Who, "Who's he?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't speak English, and it's just got a giant robot punching things, <laughs> and it was amazing, and I loved it. I imagine an Italian Spider Man was not there. No, because he's not Marvel. I don't. I don't. But what? Why? What? Where would he fit? Where would? Where would Italian Spider Man fit? Would like I said the other day, I think he'd 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 work out really well being one, a member of the Seven. But it's like, <laughs> but is could he be a Dark Horse uh, superhero? I don't think Marvel DC could could handle him. He'd definitely be a dark superhero. That's for sure. And having not seen it, I don't know. But if we want to talk about uh, rip off Spider Man movies from the 70s. There was actually a uh, a Turkish Spider Man movie. Just, just keeps getting better. Called uh, <laughs> Three Dev Adam, which translates into Three Giant Men, I guess. Oh. But so it is a crossover movie with Captain America. I have seen this. Spider Man and Luchador Santo. <laughs> Who? Oh, God. Who's a, a luchador named Santo. 
<laughs> and Spider-Man is not a hero in this movie. He is a mob boss who is the villain. Yes. <laughs> God. And kills people in ver- like hor- various horrible ways. <laughs> and there so, they are. <laughs> wow. And, and like the Spider-Man the costume thing. is... That's, it's green. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And I don't know if this was actually licensed. I can't imagine that maybe Marvel just didn't care then and they did license this. But it <laughs> is so off the wall. That's perfect. <laughs> like Turkish Captain America right there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Met fighting bad. next to a luchador. Which yeah. I, what is a luchador? It's a uh, masked, ma- masked wrestler. No. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah. So is Nacho Libre like in the Marvel Universe now? I mean, <laughs> no. that's what comes Just to by mind association. Me. Just by yeah. association, yeah. <laughs> Damn. That movie's a guilty pleasure of mine. I actually happen to be a big fan of it. Really? Yeah. It has a sweet message. I will say that. It's all about the Ninos. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It is. But yeah, I mean, so yeah, we went down this road of Spider Man and found like your your basic porn version of Spider Man, which was Italian Spider Man. Um, I'm pretty sure that you've got a porn version of Spider Man out there somewhere. Oh, I'm you sure. do that Google oh, yeah. search though. Yeah, uh, you don't. Know, it's like. I don't think it'd be hard to find. I don't want to punch those keys because I don't want to see it. I Rule really 34. Don't. Rule 34. Yeah. Right. Well, no, that's true. But it's like, it's like Spider-Man is like my personal favorite superhero. It be, because Peter Parker puts up with all kinds of crap. He's poor. Uh, he's always struggling. Uh, and it's like, I think he, he's always, Spider-Man is always neglected. It's like people don't take him as seriously as they should because I think Spider Man is awesome. But it's like I don't want to see him do porn. Although honestly, <laughs> Peter, Peter Parker's backstory, I think you know, I think I think he he could make a lot of money doing porn. Oh my god! Well, Spider Man is Aunt now- May's medical bills mount up, Linda. <laughs> Need the money. I mean, Spider Man's. Now a lot bigger than just Peter Parker because you've got uh, oh yeah the Spider Verse has has thrown in a lot of different Spider people yeah I mean just beyond like even in the main Marvel comic timeline now there's four or five different Spider Men there's oh. Peter Parker there's uh, Miles Morales uh, Miles Morales yeah. there's uh, Gwen Stacy Spider Gwen. Uh, seem to be the three big ones, but there's also Spider Man 2099, who I think is still in the main universe. That's the sad part about the the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider Man movies is like the third one I think might have had uh, Emma Stone become Spider Gwen. I think that would have been cool. Uh, but, the third movie predated Spider Gwen, so that are you had sure? Never, yeah. I, 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 I don't. I think that there was a concept of Spider Gwen. No. It predated the Spider Verse, Spider Gwen, but I no, I, no, there was. I, I really don't think uh, Spider Gwen was a kind of a one shot during the Spider Verse event. I think that's because uh, it, it actually came out because of popular opinion, and a lot of people liked it. So, yeah. So during the Spider Verse, they introduced her, and she was such a crowd favorite that they kept her around. And now they've, you know, like, they're spinning whole teams around her, <clears throat> and I don't blame them because, like, she's awesome. So Seth, who's your favorite superhero? Spider Man. Okay, so you and John, Charles, favorite oh, superhero? God, I don't know now. I, 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 when I was a kid, I was more of a Batman person. Okay. But, uh, uh, Chris, Superman, Superman. Oh, there Goku, you go. Though. All right, Linda, favorite Goku superhero. Superman. I don't watch cartoons. <laughs> no, favorite superhero. I don't watch cartoons. This is not a cartoon. We're not talking <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> superheroes, yes. I think that there's there's non-cartoon versions of superheroes. Yes. Um, I, Captain I, America. 
Okay. Uh, Chris. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What about you, Bill? Um, I'm going to say uh, probably Batman. Um, and I say that because um, I love the fact that he's got that super cool bat cave with all that technology. and All those bodies buried in it. Probably. And uh, much like my own basement. I was going to say, you've got that in common. <laughs> well, that was... That was... <laughs> The, 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 the likableness of, of Batman was that he was a self-made uh, yeah, superhero. Yeah, superhero, right. I like he that. He wasn't that... self-made. He was made by his parents' it, money. Yeah, as far as superhero Well, yeah, but, powers, but he, he was also... I just wanted to very... make it clear why Captain America. <laughs> I, I, I think <laughs> right. I, I, I see, I <laughs> we knew already, but thanks for making this clear. <laughs> to our audio listeners, she posted a picture of Chris Evans Without right a shirt. after he comes out oh, of yeah. the Captain America chamber without a shirt. So I want a shirtless. I want to post a You can bounce a quarter off their pecs. That's I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to post a picture like that of uh, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, he wants to see Brie Larson's breasts. That's right. What, right. That's not go into this again on a podcast <laughs> again. So you asked me earlier you missed the last <laughs> super cast oh what? yeah that you know what it's gonna take me uh quite some time to edit that one uh, there might be like 10 <laughs> minutes of arable content in the last super cast <laughs> i'm sorry i missed that then yeah. so interestingly enough i did the exact same search on captain marvel and i'm not coming up with anything that you're looking for that's because no, Captain heard, Marvel oh. wasn't really given any, uh, like, purposefully, no cheesecake. In yeah. There. Nope. Right. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I guess. I, I'm sure you could find some drawings if you wanted, <laughs> but you don't like cartoons. No. Right, exactly. Good point. I don't. Anyway, Chris, Superman or Goku? Who wins? Uh, Superman. What the hell is Goku? Uh, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Dragon Z. Ball. I don't know. It's an anime. Okay. I've heard the name Dragon Ball Z, but I don't really know what it is. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Goku would be like the equivalent of Superman in the Dragon Ball universe. Ah, uh, okay. Right. But there are so many different Supermans in Dragon Ball Z. Oh, yeah. No, it's ridiculous. It, Superman is always powerful. Goku needs to get beat up over and over again to get more powerful. And yes. it seems like the more he gets beat, the more powerful he. Gets. Well, that's that's the trade of the Saiyan. So yeah, that, 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 yeah. But it's like it's like like you almost have to be a masochist to actually you know get your Saiyan powers to their. their, their <laughs> yeah, their, but their... once they are, you get to destroy whole solar systems. Yep. <laughs> I've gotten hmm. gotten beat up for twenty six episodes, but now I'm in my final form. Right. <laughs> well, that's the joke. This isn't even my final form. Indeed, there's always another form. After what's the uh, name of the Superman character in the Seven? Homelander. Homelander. Oh, that's. Funny. So, who do you think would win in a battle between Homelander and Superman? Ooh. Superman. Superman. I'm gonna go with Superman. Yeah. You think? Well, I, don't I don't know. know. Homeland. I think sure Superman I would have a whole series of powers. Is he invulnerable? Homelander? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he's Super pretty tough, but I, I don't. He's, he deflects bullets off his chest. He has heat vision. Well, um, here's this. In uh, the first season of The uh, Boys, uh, remember that we see the problem they have with the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> and Maves tells Homelander to just lift up the airplane and he's like push on what i can't do that i have nothing to stand on and superman does that all the time true but yeah in the uh superman returns movie that's like the first 15 minutes he literally stops the plane from crashing right right so, in all honesty homelander's right superman wouldn't be able to do that the plane literally wouldn't have the structural integrity to to withstand but superman kind of does do that yeah, if all the time. Does, yeah. yeah, he does. He does. It doesn't matter if it's physically possible. He does do that. Yeah. He, and Superman has like 
feats of strength that the Homelander can't even approach. Do we have any idea how strong Homelander is, though? Unless he can tow the earth, <laughs> I don't think he measures up. Well, I, well but we, we have no idea. We have never seen him do anything involving strength. That, that's fair. So we, we don't have a full reveal of, of Homelander's yeah. ultimate capabilities. So maybe right. that, or as his, it stands right now, I wouldn't say that he'd be able to beat Superman. Or his ultimate with, I vulnerability. I don't think super. I think Superman would take uh, Homelander, but we don't know what Homelander can do. All right, let me let me ask, let me ask this question. Let's say you've got Superman, the the good Superman that we know. You have an identical Superman, but he's evil, and those two battling each other. I mean, that's been done a ton of times. Superman, and who's won? Evil, evil Superman will always win because oh, he's not really. Here. <laughs> right, because he wouldn't play. That would be my that would be my assumption as well. Is because that what happens? Needs, yeah, good Superman only ever wins because Batman's there <laughs> with his dirty anti Superman tricks. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. Huh. All right. But yeah, so that's been done. That in point, any... though, I would argue that you know that gives Homelander an edge because he's not he's not a. Uh, I don't picture him being a clean fighter either. Oh, so. there's bad Superman taking care of Clark Kent. I think that's out of yeah, Superman 3. Yeah. 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 Not one of the better ones. No. It, no. It, Superman, all you can say about Superman 3 is it's better than Superman 4. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. I remember Superman 4. That one. The Quest for Peace. Oh, my God. How did how did they clone a blonde Superman again? I, I'm trying to remember. It's like because yeah, a blonde Superman happened. who had long shadow nails. And he couldn't oh talk. Could just yeah, run. that was pretty. That was pretty awful. <laughs> hey, I met. I, I found out a friend of mine last night has never seen Star Wars. Wow. How did Ooh. you do that? How does how is that even possible? I don't he's know. Young. Well, he's he's uh, thirty seven. So I, you said that I'm like a 38 something. and I'm 35. Right. So, I mean, you know, but I mean, you know it's what? not like I, he hasn't had, it's not like he's 18 and just hasn't had time. Wait, he's 30, 37. Certainly in 37 years, you could have watched some star Wars. Yeah. It's immersive in the culture. How do you even yeah. get by not seeing star Wars? I don't know. So the nails. There we go. <laughs> oh yeah, there's, there's, that's Superman's. Oh cool. look at look at that hair. <laughs> you know, wow, yeah, that's. Look at that. That's. Oh. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that later today. No, don't. No, no. Is that <laughs> Superman four? Yeah. 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 What we need to do is like when we're able to get together again. This is one we need to watch. Mm-hmm. This would be and a good one to have a show yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, Superman Four. Maybe we maybe we schedule a backyard movie night. I would just, I would be down with that. I I would watch I would watch Superman Four with you guys. All right, maybe I we would, can do that in September. It'll be a little cooler. That'd be nice. Yeah. All right, we'll set something up. Oh, yeah. Set, all right. I don't know how to lower your expectations enough, Chris, for this particular movie because. It is so bad. I, I, I've always enjoyed any of the Superman movies, animated films, and stuff like that. So I'm the just The movie a starts. The movie starts with everyone launching their nuclear weapons into space. I know. Catches Wraps it, it around in net and tosses it, it into catches. the sun, right? Yeah. Just, it's so bad. I, but that's what I enjoy, worse. right? I, I enjoy bad movies as much as I enjoy good movies. So I think to me, we, that, that crappiness is the charm of what Superman was back in the day. So I'll always enjoy what Christopher Reeves brought to the table. Well, I always enjoy Christopher Reeves Superman just as much as I enjoy every Superman that came after him before. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't hate the movie. I'll always watch it because that was the charm of what it was then. Oh no, and, and, it and was no. hot garbage. It absolutely was. Christopher Reeves Superman was great, but yeah. it's like I could tell. I mean, Jesus, three and four were pretty much a check. I think you know it's like yeah. Know, did did yeah, the there was there was no real reason they should have stopped. But they, they, they should have stopped for their own franchise's sake. But yeah. 
And when it's, they did uh, Brandon Roof's uh, Superman Returns, I thought that was the biggest nod towards Christopher Reeves, actually. Indeed. Was, and they uh, also, looks, they that, also that, ignored the fact that three and four happened and went this true. was. <laughs> so. as, as well they should. Look at the, look, take a look at this guy. He's got, it looks like he's got sparklies in his hair. <laughs> he does. Someone went a little bit. He, a little he bit has. He has the Tucker. He has Tucker Carlson face right there. Look at that Tucker face. Tucker Carlson face. <laughs> and like That's Tucker, Tucker Carlson, Carlson's permanent expression. Like Tucker Carlson, he can only grunt and growl. <laughs> oh man! I'll bet he sounds really whiny. Just from that face. I'm gonna have to like deep fake his face onto that later today. <laughs> Because now I can't see it. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, that's, that's happening. We, we need to include, we need to do more of our bad or old, uh, old bad sci-fi movie reviews. Yeah, those are fun. Those are fun, and we need to right. include Chris in those, because he will appreciate them. Well, I still think <laughs> like, we we'll have him before. in on Krull now. We well, we need to see we need to see Zardoz together. No. Do we? Do we? No. <laughs> uh, no. You would be surprised at how bad it is. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's cuz you have a preconceived notion of how it's going to be bad, but you really don't cuz it sneaks up and finds new ways to be bad. It's kind of impressive in that sense. Huh. All right. Wait, I found. I, I think, found off. Oh, I've got a good one. Highlander three. Wait. Or, oh, oh, Highlander two. Highlander two. No, 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 no. Those aren't even the worst ones. Um, the uh, once again, Bill. I think you're gonna have to blur some things out. No. <laughs> <laughs> they're all up. They're all. You mean like blocked. that whole screenshot? Oh. Uh, Honestly. Uh, it's but the, Highlander 2 is a fantastically awful movie. It is. Is that the one with the hoverboards? Yes. Yeah, what? that was so bad. That was it's so not the worst bad. one, though. The, uh, I know, but you it's got, like, the old Sorcerer bad. One, and then uh, Endgame was just... No, I thought Endgame was okay. It was The Source that was uh, Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, The awful. Source. Yes, The Source. Hmm. Like Endgame was the one where they uh, brought, ah, uh, they brought the two, they brought Connor and Duncan, Duncan together yep. for one last kind of. It was kind of a capper to the TV series almost. Mm. All right, but yeah, the source was just unwatchable trash. <laughs> it was. It wasn't even the, fun on watchable track. By the time that it came out, it was horrible. And uh, gosh, yeah. All we're, right, we're, we're lining up all the bad movies we want to see. Yeah, yes. no. <laughs> we need to we need to put a list out there, and then we can just tick them off one at a time. I'll, I'll put something up in the Discord. Cause... All right, sounds like a plan. All right, well, anybody else have any other? Uh, what looks like we're getting on to or. Uh, our time here. So anybody have any last minute thoughts? Well, what do you think about um, HBO Max releasing Blazing Saddles, but you're required to watch a video ahead of time explaining racism? Sure. Huh. Actually, you know what? I, I like, there was... I, I kind of like that idea, actually. I like because, it. I, yeah. I love the idea, actually. Blazing Saddles is so <laughs> racist. And I understand why Mel, uh, um, Mel Brooks did it. It was actually a statement against racism. But there's so much in there that, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like... A little context would be good. Blazing yeah. Saddles should still be enjoyed. But we can give it a little bit of context. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I still think, think a it's idea. a great movie. But you do need, I think you need to know the environment in which it was made and what mm -hmm. Mel, uh, Mel uh, Brooks was going for. Yep. I almost said Gibson. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Mel Gibson doesn't care about racism. No. no. Well, I, I actually think that'd be nice to have not just racism, but I guess uh, uh, any older movie, it'd be nice to have a little uh, mm -hmm. context. A little way yeah, what was going on in society at the time mm -hmm. if it um if it's pertinent 
If it's pertinent, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we recently, like, well, I don't know if we as a collective, but I recently found out that, or read about how much of a white supremacist that John Wayne was. So. Oh, he was. He was. It was now, the there's times. A, there's a handful of them out there that, yeah. Well, you see, I'm, I'm tired of people saying it was the times. It was the times. Like, if, 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 if it was the times, then why do we still why have do we them? Actually still well, you, you do need, like, I well, the last couple of years, because it, it was because of the John Wayne stories, but um, the, the lone Wild West guy is usually a Confederate soldier. And uh, I grew up not knowing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, all these cowboys are, um, well, they were all on the other side. Yeah. Well, so to speak. and like the West isn't anything like it's portrayed in any of well, the movies. Oh no, not at all. But it's like, mm -hmm. people are saying, do you want us to dump our history because of all this? And I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Let it go. Let it well, go. Let's, no. no, no, forget it. We'll we'll make new stuff with blackjack and hookers. It'll be better. No, we need, to, all this we need to look. We need I to think actually we need, learn our history. We need context. Look it right and, in its eyes and go. Okay, that was us. Let's not be that anymore. Right. Right. Because yeah. I think when you see it, especially when you see it, eyes of today looking back. It's really glaring how blatant mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. And it makes you then, I, in my mind at least, look at where we are today and you say, okay, are there things that we're doing today that we just think is, you know, normal that in 20 years we're going to look back on and say, oh my God, how did we permit that going on back then? So oh, yeah. what are we doing today? It makes you kind of, in my mind, mm -hmm. think, what do we need to change now? Mm -hmm you know, rather than wait 20 years and look back and say, God, how did we just let that go on and not realize what we were doing? Right. So. Back, in, <laughs> uh, back in the days of VHS, mm -hmm. for a short period of time, I belonged to, uh, this was in Seattle, I belonged to a movie club. You, know, you had to pay like, it was an expensive membership. But what 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 it was though was they had uh, tables. They had like a little library. They had tables, and they had um, oh, like every Academy Award winning movie was there, and there were articles on the movies, and books just laying around about certain movies. Mm -hmm. and so you go in there, and you'd actually browse the library first, and then by the time you got, then all of a sudden you had this. You, you had you develop an interest in a movie because of what was going on in the world then or because of how they made it or, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was a lot of fun. That made for a good Friday night, huh. actually. Because uh, even if the movie was old and horrible, you at least, uh, <laughs> well, because sometimes they are, you know. But yeah, you're right. Least, but you're getting, uh, this is how society viewed things then. You know? Right, exactly. Mm. That's and, why I'm at, that's, and, that's and the you, way it you was. Are getting, you're, you're getting sometimes a vocabulary lesson, you know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so uh, that was uh, that was a long time ago, but it was a lot of fun. And I think I'd love to see that come to like, especially anything that's an older movie, but even newer ones. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, have a little context before it airs. Yeah, or or even if it's not, or something to debate after the movie. I mean, mm -hmm. go ahead and give me that too. So if you're going with friends, what's going to be the discussion topic that starts out the, you know, at dinner after the movie, assuming sure. that ever happens again. Yep. All right. All right. Fair well. point. Well, I think uh, we'll call it a wrap then. Sounds good. Yep. Thank you, uh, Chris, for joining us again. We're going to try to get you on as a regular a regular host now, if that works for you, if you're available. Okay. Sweet. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Put you on the front page. Yep. Get you on the front page of the website. and um, we'll Send us just... a cheeky picture. <laughs> Can do.
<laughs> all right. Sounds good. Well, thank you all for watching uh, this episode of Galactic Driftwood. Um, we will be back next time. We'll have uh, some commentary and uh, thoughts on at least the first couple of episodes of um, uh, Lovecraft just, Country. What God, we I just talked a, about. Threw a blank <laughs> for a minute. All I could think of was Cthulhu Country, and I knew that wasn't it. <laughs> I, I would like to. I would also like us to, to talk about Umbrella Academy if we could. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, Linda and I, that. Linda and I have just watched the first one of those, so we should be well into it by the next time we have a show. So let's do that. Let's talk about Umbrella Academy and Lovecraft Country. And I didn't know what to expect, but when I started, I finally, I, I finished after four episodes because I just didn't realize I kept going. It's like it was so uh, good that I just enjoyed it. It's cool. like, all right. Well, yeah, it looks good so far. So cool. Uh, Galactic Driftwood is part of the Synergy Nation podcasts or Synergy Nation Network. Uh, that you can find at uh, synnation, S-Y-N nation dot com. Net. Net, dot net, S-Y-N nation dot net. There you go. All right, sounds good. And you could, of course, catch uh, catch all of our episodes on our website if you go to galacticdriftwood.space. So we will see you all next time. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to this episode of the Galactic Driftwood Podcast. For more information and past episodes, please visit our website at galacticdriftwood.space or subscribe to us on YouTube. And now, please deactivate your cranial downlinks, collect your towels, and be sure to watch your step as you exit our gravity well. <laughs>